All right, so we're back with another Real Talk today, and um, I got my boy Vince here. What's up, Vince? Howdy, howdy. <laughs> and uh, we got an interesting topic today that we've decided would be a good thing to talk about because it's such a big, big, uh, big thing nowadays. Maybe controversial depending on how you look at it, but uh, we got battle passes everywhere, and we wanted to present some like pros and cons and just talk about it in general. Because um, it's such a common thing nowadays, so in the way it, it look, it looks in the future, we're going to have it all the time. So, because it seems to be working, so whatever it is, um, we're going to go ahead and talk about that. So, we're going to go. We got like a little bit of a pro and con, like back and forth. Uh, we'll put like two pros, two cons, talk about them, that kind of thing. So, we'll go ahead and start off. Uh, Vince, you want to go ahead and start us off with a pro? Pass. It uh it really it provides more contents for players. Uh, of course, with most games, any type of game that has a battle pass, that content needs to be really well. And if the players like it, they're gonna get it. It's also it it just it just provides more to the game for a player to enjoy. Like cosmetics, you can make your character look a certain way, and it just makes it more enjoyable because you can personalize and stylize the way you want to now that kind of actually leads kind of well into my pro because the one that i chose um is at the end of the day like the gamer retention and like low burnout is pretty high or pretty low rather like you don't like you know back in the day like you know call of duty zombies like we had a lot of fun playing it but at some point the content wasn't enough so we'd stop playing it you know like we burn out or that's with a lot of games a day but with the whole like system of battle pass is like like for example like with modern warfare just now with me i played it for like two three months straight and i burned out hardcore on it and i never touched it until the new battle pass came out because when you look at that you go oh it's new content so now i can go back into it so like the burnout rate is a lot lower because you'll come back to a game a lot quicker or like play it more often because there's more content to get so I mean, I think it. I think that's pretty dope. Uh, but I'm I'm on the side of like in the middle, I suppose. Like, I don't know. Are you for it 100 percent or like? Uh, you know, I'm definitely for it. It just really okay. depends. You know, it just dep it, Yeah, it depends how the developer uses it. Like, if you can tell, like it's a, it's a, like it's used bad. Like, yeah, I can, I can see. Or just like thrown in there for like extra money. Depends how you look yeah. at it, but I mean, I think it's I think it's good for sure. But it also could leave a lot of openings for like people to to like fuck things up. This is what slides into like the con portion of it because when you have battle passes, they're very specific. You could have a company that will port more into you have to buy it if you want this type of content. You have to buy it. Then you have other companies who. They'll do the little, you, here's a free thing for you, for a free-to-play player who doesn't want to spend their money or doesn't have whatever in-game currency that the game uses. And and that's really a developer thing, whether way they want to choose to do that or they want to, you know, give people who love playing the game but can't afford to spend money uh, uh, content, you know? Yeah, true. Um and that kind of helps with my con. There's, there's like a, it really depends on the developer. It's, it's pretty heavy on that. But like a, a con that I have is like it, it can be a slow trip of content compared to like a day one launch. Because like we're, we're in the era now of like release a broken game or like a half content game and just update it after a few months. Then you get your full game, you know. So like in that scenario, some developers will just go. You know, we got a bunch of this new content. You know, look, check out this game development. You know, we got this at, we want to add to it. This we want to add to it. This we want to add to it. And they're like, well, that's great. But can you guys like cut that in half? And then we can do a battle pass to release slow amounts of that. To where that way they get more money out of the deal. But they also, like, instead of putting that on day one. Because like back in like, the, you know, like our old era of gaming. Like Nintendo and like Nintendo 64 and things like that. When you bought a game, that's what that game was. Like, there was no updates. There was no battle pass. Like, you, what the content you had on day one is what you had. So, like, nowadays, I think if a battle pass is used incorrectly, a big way they can do that is by releasing a half a game and slowly releasing more with a battle pass. So, not only do they get more money, 
but they cut half the content, uh, which is not all developers, but you could definitely see it happening. Like, I, I wouldn't doubt if something in Battle Passes for Modern Warfare wasn't originally planned for the original game. I would not doubt that at all. But, like, that's a, that's a thing that can happen, and I think that, that that's, that's a con if, uh, depending on the developer, that you can just release slow drips of content that we could have had on the day one, you know? I mean, and th and that's that's where you can get into like a perspective of the, the business. You know, they they gotta make money. Yeah, they no want doubt. They no get more and more money. That that's the whole goal. They want, uh, and they want their fan base to enjoy what they're making, but they also want to be able to to keep that continuous income. It's a business after all. It's True. How they work. Well, let's go ahead and flip back to another pro, because I think we can uh, keep it from going too negative, but. Uh... Just to kind of present both sides, I want to try to do back and forth. Um, one, another pro I have here is it's not a necessity. It's not a necessity. I can play Modern Warfare right now, not spend a dollar, and never have to worry about it. Now, if I want the specific things, sure. You know, like if I see something cool in the in the store, or it, if the battle pass has something cool in it, I might buy it. But I don't need to. I just don't need to to compete with other people. And 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 Modern Warfare also has made it really good because they have. The guns that are added to the game in the battle pass, but they're free. There's like a couple free tiers, and they're part of that. So like you don't ever have to worry about having to buy a battle pass. You don't need to do it at all if you don't want to. And not all games are like that, but this one, at least Modern Warfare is. Yeah, I, I'm a bit of a, a live example of that. Because for a while there, you know, and a lot of other people know, I was a free-to-play because I didn't have any money. I still really don't have that much money, you know. But I saw what other people were getting. And I would really, really, really wish that some of the things were free. Yeah. Because I could only get a few things from the Battle Pass or whatever they gave out for free. But the guns, I love that they did the guns for free. Love that. But other things like the, the unlockable ones, like Bruin, for example... Any free-to-play player couldn't get that because of the challenge. Yeah. Well, the gun wasn't free, so you had to struggle. Uh, and as a free-to-play, uh, you, you can't get as much stuff. For, for example, I only have one gun gold out of everything, and that's the M4. Because I use it all the time. It was my go-to weapon. It's like the easiest thing to level up. Uh but you you really have to try a lot harder to get some of the things that somebody who's playing, you know, the paid for game uh, in the battle pass. You have to try a lot harder to get that stuff. Because some yeah, of those blueprints, yeah. some of those blueprints give you attachments for free, and some of those guns for free. Yeah, that like I think that's a really cool way of doing it. Like I think another one of these real talks we can have eventually could be uh, like free to play games, like the free to play structure. But like the the like, it can really work out as far as like it, as long as you make stuff that doesn't give people an edge, like viable. Like you have to have like I believe one hundred percent in cosmetics. Like I think anything that you have to like, like a good example would be like uh, Battlefront. Like I don't know if you've ever heard of that kind of structure of how they did it, but like they had the loot boxes. Yeah. And in that scenario you'd get better stuff based on buying the loot boxes. And I think that's a totally botched method. And I think that that's bullshit. Like, if you if you can insert credit card here to have a better gun than me, I think that's bullshit. So I think with the Battle Pass, it's kind of a way that they've used it to give people stuff to be even across the board for most, for most developers um, without having to spend money to do so but leaving the ability for people that want to to have like the cosmetic stuff and i think that's a perfect a perfect kind of scenario but uh what's yeah. another pro you got cuz i know you have another counteract right well, let's see here um oh yeah this is a good one because this one this one applied to me uh with modern warfare the 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 free currency that some battle passes give so if you work hard enough you will be able to buy the battle pass and that's exactly what happened to me I yeah, played since yeah. I started at the halfway point of season two, went all the way to th uh, season three and four, uh, and I finally this season 
got enough currency, enough of the COD points to be able to buy the Battle Pass for free when I completed it. And so, is there a way to uh, get COD now, points without um without having to purchase any? The only way you can do it on Call of Duty is you just have to go through the battle passes over and over again. Yeah, Cause that because like yeah, it, it it you know on, on Modern Warfare it gives you three hundred free COD points, and I just kept saving them up. And this season, I finally had enough to buy the battle pass, so I went ahead and did it. And from now on, as long as the price for the next battle pass stays at a thousand i have enough every single time as long as they don't change anything me as a free-to-play player uh even though i got the game uh i can still go ahead and earn uh cod points to be able to get the battle pass see so and i have to spend money that's like that kind of uh leads into like a pro and a con which i'll kind of elaborate on but the pro that i had for that was um really relative to that is that when you buy a battle pass, like at least right now, like Modern Warfare, I'm speaking. I'm speaking mostly Modern Warfare because I know a lot more about the battle pass, and that's the only real reason. But the if you if you buy a battle pass right now for Modern Warfare and you play through it completely, you get enough currency to get the next one, and you never have to worry about rebuying into it. So I think that's a really good one. But it's also can be a flip side of a, of a con because. It technically makes you spend more money on the game to begin with if you wanted to get it the first time. Um, or, like, after already spending $60 on Modern Warfare, they're like, oh, now I'll spend $10 on this or $20 for, like, extra tiers or whatever. But it also incentivizes more purchases in the long run because the way that they have it structured is, like, $10 for 1100 right? Or, like, $20 for 2400 Right, so like in that scenario, the battle pass, um, you would spend ten dollars because that's the lowest amount, right? And then you would get eleven hundred. So then, when you buy that battle pass, you have a hundred, maybe two hundred, maybe you had a hundred before that, right? So like a hundred or two hundred cod points after getting the battle pass. So you're sitting there staring at it, and you're like, I have two hundred cod points that aren't doing anything. And then you're like, oh, but this this pack over here is only ten bucks, right? So let me just spend like eight dollars, and I'm good. So like, it, it kind of it's it's really kind of a a brilliant thing if you think about it. But it also pushes for more purchases, the way that they have it structured, which is a great business idea. But it it also is a little fishy because like they know they know what they're doing, you know. Yeah. Let's do a con that I think. Is very interesting. I don't know if you would agree with it fully, but um, longer game cycles. That's an interesting one. Because, like, back, like, it, a lot of people burn out of games quickly. At least it's a little different now with Battle Passes for more content, but it kind of conflicts the, in my opinion, like, the area of gaming because people will be more focused on other games for more, like, for longer. So, like, a good example would be, like, these battle passes are going to go into probably the next con. That being said, you know, that, that's good for Call of Duty because they're the same franchise. So, they're going to maintain players in Modern Warfare and the next Call of Duty. And then slowly leak into the new one. Or whatever they, you know, that might happen. But it's bad if you look at it from a developer standpoint that aren't Call of Duty, that aren't Activision. Because you'll have scenarios where people are still focused on this game. It's really hard to break into the scene of gaming with like a AAA title um, now because of the cycles are a little longer. What do you think about that? Uh, I mean, I can definitely, I can definitely see that. Yeah. If what you're saying there it, it's a, that's a really difficult one to go on to you know yeah it, it just it encompasses so much as i think it i just cycle. think it's interesting because like it because you could definitely tell the cycles are a little longer because of the content drip you know but it, it just yeah, depends I mean, whether or not that's a bad thing or not i don't know how to, like i have it as a con because i think it can make it harder for other games like and other developers to break oh. into a scene well, it is because, you know, you got you got more people focusing 
on that game mm. because they're going to keep going with it. So unless it's, you know, a big franchise, like you already know, everybody's going to switch over to the, the next COD game once it drops. But for other titles that are coming out, like uh, like Hyperscape, for example, I mean, you see people talking about it, but it's not huge. Yeah, yeah. Like, for example, like, Modern Warfare, at least right now, is, like, taking over FPS. So, like, if you're another FPS shooter, it's hard to get that eye on you because everybody is focused on Modern Warfare. And I think as me and you as content creators, we have a good, like, insight to that because when you're a content creator, you don't always want to follow, like, the biggest trend. But at the end of the day, being a creator means that you do most of the time because people enjoy that content because of it's a trending thing like everybody wants to go into the trending part of stuff so like when you put like a clip up of modern warfare it's probably going to do better than it's going to do with like a smaller game you know because people are focusing on modern warfare it's a bigger game so people are looking for those clips they're looking for that content so i think as a content creator we can see that even more because it's it's hot. like you got to imagine as a game developer when you make a new game you want to push it you advertise it and if you're not Modern Warfare currently, you're not seen in the FPS scene. Like, people play other games, of course, but it's a lot harder to break into the content, you know, creation portion because everybody wants to focus on that game. I mean, at that point, that's, uh, that runs into more of a, a business yeah, type yeah. Of issue. Because if you're coming onto the game scene, you need to come out with some type of content, something that is enjoyable, new, refreshing. Like, you can look at Call of Duty. It's basically been the same thing over and over, you know? Yeah. It's boots yep. on the ground war. You get, you know, some of the kill streaks are the same, but they renew it. Mm -hmm. Battlefield is the same way. You do Halo, things like that. It's just, they add little tweaks, different things, and... You know, gra graphics is something that can go into that. Uh, guns, animations. And, I mean, for what it's worth, are. like, I know it's not relative to the topic, but I think uh, Modern Warfare is, like, the best Call of Duty in a while. I, I really th I really feel the passion that was put into that game. It's, it's definitely a step up. Yeah, definitely for sure. Like, because we were, we were in the Dark Age of COD, and I think we're kind of... Not not getting back to its prime necessarily, but we got something, you know. Like we got a good game, and I think that's a big step for sure. But you also notice that there's a, there's only been what one other Call of Duty game that has had a battle royale. Uh, yeah, one? Blackout. I think. Yeah, yeah, Black Ops Four. You compare Blackout to Warzone. Oh, Warzone fucking yeah. Is completely different. But, like, and I, I kind of understand it in its own way because, like, Blackout was, like, an afterthought. Like, if you ever remember anything about, like, the reveal and them talking about it, like, people talked about how they were, like, three-fourths to almost done with the campaign. And then they were like, hey, guess what? You know, Fortnite blew up. We need a battle royale if we want to stay relevant. So they're like, cut the whole campaign, cut all the assets we put into it, cut all the, the, you know, the people that produced it and developed it, and let's throw them into making a battle royale. So I feel like that not only was like a half, a half a battle royale, like half thought, but like it also was the first entry of their battle royale. They had to learn a lot from it. So I think we got the Warzone. I think Warzone is what we were meant to get if the time and the knowledge was in it because it's 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 a brilliant brilliant battle royale yeah and you can definitely see a lot of the elements have, have carried over with it oh yeah for sure it's amazing but um all right i have one more con i think and i don't think i have any more pros after that so i guess we'll we'll end off negative at least for my side <laughs> so i guess we'll see if we have a counter production but uh my last con I have, um, and this isn't really relative to us because, you know, we're content creators. We play the game a lot. But I can see how people that do not have that invested time, like people that are like after work players, not having enough time to sit there and play through a battle pass for 20, 30 hours. They have two, two hours, maybe a family. They have, they have family at home. You know, they have maybe have like two hours to an hour to play when they get off work. 
And I think that's that's kind of crap because the people that have the time to invest like me and you can get these things. But the people that do not aren't able to get these things at all because they just don't have the time. They might have the money, which is no problem. They just don't have the time. Uh, that, that runs into the, the problem with limited time items. You know, there may be something super, super cool, but then it goes away and you don't have the chance to get it back unless they bring it back uh, for whatever reason. And I that's something with a free-to-play player, you know? If you don't have the currency to, to, to get the battle pass, a lot of the things you think is cool on there and you want, you won't be able to get because they're not going to add it back unless they add it back because they want to, you know, they want people to buy it. How many days is, uh, I, I don't mean to keep going to Modern Warfare, but like I said, I, I know more about it. Uh, how many days is the Battle Pass? It's what, 60 days that you get to play it? So. Um, that, I think, is a golden number. Because, like, me and you, people like me and you, we'll get the Battle Pass done in 20, 20 days, 15 days, you know? But I think that extra 30, 30, 40 plus days gives the time of the day for the person that doesn't have the ability to do it every single day like we do so in that scenario you know i think modern warfare has got the idea with like the two months i, th I think we're, i think every like developer is going to slowly etch their way into like the perfect feeling of a battle pass and i think that the amount of days for it to work out for the gamer that doesn't have every day to play is like 60 days because they have that time because if you if we invest 20 30 hours we get the battle pass done right and we can do that in two weeks and with somebody that has an hour or two a day, they that sixty days will add up pretty quickly, you know. Yeah. So like, I think that that's the golden era of it. But I also I do agree with what you're saying with the content as far as like if you can't like that tier one hundred, you know, everybody wants whatever it is most of the time. But say the guy that doesn't have the time doesn't get there, and you know, everybody's running around with it, and he's like, oh man, I have no ability to get this again. He's got the money, he just doesn't have the time. Yeah. And you know, and I think I think it's like it's kind of a business plan because people want to invest in the battle pass and they want that to happen. But I think it can also hurt the people that aren't super invested, which I guess is depending on how you look at it, not how the company looks in their player base. They want the people to play as much as possible, but it's not the reality. You know, it's not the reality. You can't sit. Not everybody can sit and play for five, ten hours a day. You see, there, there is a pro that lies in the Battle Pass with uh, some games, including uh, little boosts. You know, your, your two times boosts, things like that, that'll last a certain amount of time. So, uh, like, you, you're, like you're saying, you know, somebody who doesn't have enough time, you know, they have an hour, whatever, they could add that on, and that can cut down the amount of time that they would need to reach whatever point that they're going to reach, uh, you know, in a, in a longer time. Yeah, yeah, I agree for right. sure. So do you have any other pros or cons? Or is that basically close out? I think that's it. Okay. Well, I guess let's do, uh, let's do closing statements. So I'm 100%, like you said, for... Uh, well, I, like I said, I'm not a hundred. I just, I think, I think I'm like 80% for battle passes because I can see how a developer could fuck them up. But I think they're going on the right path. So my closing statement is I think they're good to go for right now. I do too. You know, they got they got the pros and cons. We doesn't discuss it. But it's it's mainly up to the business and the person to uh handle that and what they're gonna do. Yeah, for sure. Well, I appreciate you coming on here, Vince, and talking to me about this scenario. Maybe we can have you on another one. But uh I appreciate you coming by talking uh, about this controversial battle pass subject the, the new culture the the battle pass culture and uh we'll go ahead and put the links below for me and for vince go ahead and go shoot him a follow hang out with him on stream we stream all the time we got our schedules up um and i'll see you guys around i appreciate appreciate everybody watching leave a like and you know hanging out and all that kind of fun stuff so mr vince i will see you on the flip side my guy